Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, the go-to place for informative and engaging content. Today we have a special and important topic to discuss, venous leg ulcers. Now, I know this might sound a bit medical, but don't worry. We're going to break it down in a way that's easy to understand for everyone. Whether you are dealing with a venous leg ulcer yourself, know someone who is, or you are a healthcare professional taking care of someone with venous leg ulcer, or you are just someone who is curious to know or learn about this condition, you are in the right place. I'm going to share valuable information that could make a difference in your life or the lives of your loved ones. Let's dive into this topic and get a better understanding of what venous leg ulcers are, how they happen, and most importantly, what can you do about it? First things first, what exactly are venous leg ulcers? Well, these are open sores that typically develop on the lower leg due to poor circulation. It is a dysfunction of the venous return. Don't worry, we'll get into the details in just a bit. But before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on our upcoming health-related content. Ladies and gentlemen, here's an overview of the circulation. Here's your heart rate is the pump center of the body. It gives off the arteries that brings blood, oxygen, and nutrients to different organs of the body and distributes oxygen, blood, and nutrients to even to the most uh, distal part or the farthest part of your lower extremities, which are the toes farthest part of your upper extremities which are the fingers and the part of your body which is your brain or your head in order for the the blood to reach the farthest part of the body this arteries has to be on a high pressure all the time and uh, that is uh, made possible or it is possible because of its proximity to the pump which is the heart now in order for the blood to go back to the heart the blood has to take a different pathway or a different vessel we call it the veins now the veins owing to the fact that is farther from the heart the pressure here is slow so it's a low pressure vessel and um, we will um, study this further because the focus of this video is to explain how diseases or problem or dysfunction of the veins would result to a chronic venous ulcer in the leg. Now let's take a laser focus on the anatomy and physiology of the circula circulatory system. I'm talking about the structure and the function of the circulation. As you can see in this illustration, we have the heart and then we have the arteries coming out of the heart to distribute blood to the different tissue or the different organs in the body. If you can see at this junction, you have this part is this is what we call involves tiny blood vessels called capillaries. Think of this as narrow roads connecting the larger highways of arteries and veins. In these capillaries, the oxygen and nutrients pass from the blood to surrounding tissues while waste products move from tissues to the blood. It's like a small scale exchange point where the body gets what it needs and disposes of what it doesn't. At this point, what I want you guys to remember is that the wall of the blood vessels, especially on the arterial side and the capillary side, are not solid wall. They are actually composed of, if you take a look on the uh, histological structure or the structures of this 
walls in a microscope they're actually composed of of adjacent cells and see that these cells have what we call these gap junctions and because these vessels are subjected to high pressure the tendency is for the blood or the fluid to leak out of the blood vessel on the capillary side to this what we call space here and this is what we call the interstitial space so there is a continuous okay continuous leak out of the circulate of the fluid coming out of the blood vessel uh, to this space let's take a look what is this space all about now if this is your blood vessel if this is your blood vessel which is the capillary and this is your tissue the space in between okay, is what we call the interstitium or what we call the interstitial space this space is what we call the interstitial space an excessive accumulation of fluid here will result into swelling or what you call edema now if that's the end of the story then we will have a problem everybody who walks in the street will have a swollen leg will have a swollen eye swollen face or swollen arms but that is not the case why the body is so amazing that the creator of the body okay, actually provided a drainage system and this drainage system is what we call the lymphatics this is what we call the lymphatic vessels or lymphatic capillaries or otherwise known as your lymphatic collectors and the the uh, uh, function or the role of these lymphatics is to collect drain and transport this fluid back to the veins for these fluids to be recirculated now i must mention this early that en route to the veins these lymphatics are connected to what we call lymph nodes and the purpose of this is that every cir circulating fluid that is being collected and drained out of the interstitial space or the interstitium here's the interstitium will be filtered out as they reach the lymph nodes the lymph nodes detoxify any circulating fluid so that before it drains back to the veins these fluids are already filtered out so if there is a foreign body say for example a uh, bacteria that is drained out or collected from the interstitium as this bacteria reaches the lymph nodes they will be eradicated therefore the lymphatic fluid that is coming out of the uh, lymph nodes is generally sterile this maintains ladies and gentlemen the sterility of the circulating blood just to give you a bigger eye view ladies and gentlemen here is the capillaries and there's the capillary also in the venous side and this is uh, the veins itself and uh, see how these are the lymphatics uh, and uh, I just finished telling you guys that uh, the role of the lymphatic is to collect excess fluid from the interstitial space so that under normal conditions we don't swell at this juncture remember that most of the fluids most of the bloods are reabsorbed back to the veins and are being returned back to the heart when you're standing gravity becomes a challenge for blood trying to return your heart from the lower parts of your body 
veins which carry blood back to your heart are working against the gravity in this scenario. The blood has to move upward against the forces trying to pull it down. Oh, this is getting more exciting. When someone is standing, how does venous blood returns back to the heart against gravity there are three mechanisms number one is to the function of the venous valve v-a-l-v-e -E. this is aided by the strong contraction of your calf muscles those are the muscles at the back of your legs and this is further enhanced by the act of respiration and i'm going to discuss these three one by one so let's talk more about the venous valve Imagine your veins are like pipelines, and in these pipelines, there are doors called valves. These valves normally close behind the blood to keep it moving in one direction, preventing any back backward flow. Now, if these valves don't close properly, it's like having a leak in the pipeline. Instead of a smooth flow, blood can pull or congest in certain areas. This congestion increases the pressure in the central part of your veins close to your heart. When this pressure goes up, it can lead to problems. Think of it like water building up behind a dam, too much pressure, and it can cause damage. In your body, increased central venous pressure can contribute to issues like ulceration, it's as if the excess pressure is pushing against the walls, potentially causing harm, especially in areas where the blood is not moving as it should. As I mentioned earlier, the function of the valves to return the venous blood back to the heart are enhanced or aided by the strong contraction of the calf muscles. Think of your calf muscles as pumps that uh, help blood flow back to the heart. When you walk or move, these muscles squeeze the veins in your legs, pushing blood upward. This action, like squeezing a tube of toothpaste, help prevent blood from pulling in the legs, reducing the risk of, of stasis ulcers. Sort of like maintaining a good flow in a river to prevent stagnation. One other mechanism to help with venous return is respiration, deep breathing. Breathe. Your diaphragm and chest muscles create changes in pressure within the chest cavity. This pressure changes help blood return to the heart. As you inhale, the pressure decreases, allowing blood in the veins to move towards the heart. It's like a gentle suction that aids venous return, ensuring blood keeps flowing back to the heart and preventing stagnation. After learning the contribution of a strong contraction of the calf muscles as well as the impact of deep breathing and enhancing uh, venous return, one um, could, uh, should be able to understand that in cases of weakness, in cases of immobility, in cases of laziness, in cases of prolonged stay in your recliner, in cases of staying in bed for a long period of time, and sometimes this happens when someone is really sick and they stay in bed, do not be surprised that all these events will exacerbate the edema in the legs in patients with valvular defects in their veins or what we call chronic venous insufficiency and when there is edema the risk of ulceration or formation of stasis ulcer is very high one of the most common questions that i get uh, from patients with uh, chronic venous ulcer is the staining that is um, very obvious around the, the wound. Anybody who has venous leg ulcer has this classic uh, discoloration and we call this hemocytorin. What is hemocytorin? Hemocytorin is a substance that our body produces when it breaks down red blood cells. It contains iron which gives it uh, a, a brownish color. Why does it happen? In venous ulcers, the 
blood doesn't uh, flow back to the heart as we already discussed as efficiently as it should. This can cause blood to pull in the veins and over time the red blood cells break down releasing hemocytrin. How does it look? Hemocytrin staining appears as a brownish discoloration in the skin around the ulcer and it's like a stain left behind by a breakdown of blood cells. What does it mean? While hemocytrin staining itself doesn't cause pain, it's a sign that there is an issue with the blood flow in that area. It's an indication of long-term venous insufficiency and what can be done? Managing the underlying cause of the venous insufficiency is the key. After knowing how an ulcer or a wound is created when you have a venous problem, someone might ask, why is this happening to me? How did this happen to me? Why me? Why not you? Why not him? Why not her? Why not my neighbor? Why not my enemy? Why not my You might have a history of earlier injury or a surgery involving your abdomen or any region below the abdomen or act even any time some sort of injury in your legs in the past you might have developed a blood clot we call it dvt or deep vein thrombosis in <clears throat> in your lifetime being an older is uh, also a risk factor one of the gifts of aging is that uh, you will have a um, dysfunctional uh, venous system your vein might ha uh, could develop uh, could could become floppy or become weak and it don't close completely so it will result to ulceration like we have spoken about anyway a family history of uh, someone who had venous ulcer will also increase your risk of developing chronic venous ulcers in the future. I must mention that obesity or over or be, uh, I'm sorry, being overweight is also a well-known risk factor for this. You don't want to wait until you see an unresolving swelling or edema in your legs and you start seeing the wound or you're, you're having some sort of cellulitis and then you freak out and you seek treatment. Sometimes it's it's better for you to prevent it right now. A lot of diseases are uh, correlated to being overweight and one of them is venous problem that will result into a non-healing or hard to heal wounds in the future. If you know that you have to uh, reduce weight, if you have not done it, this is the right time for you to start losing weight. Now let's continue with our discussion as I just got back from outside. It's very cold, but it wasn't an excuse. How can you help to heal your ulcer? How can you help to help yourself? Anyway, uh, start by working hand in hand and closely with your healthcare provider, with your wound care specialist, with your nurse, with your therapist in order for you to make a realistic plan of care. Any good wound care specialist may be able to assess and recommend that you would go and see a vascular specialist in order for, for them to rule out the presence of concomitant or concomitant arterial component or arterial compromise along with your venous problem. Because literature has proven, had shown that 10 to 20% of people with chronic venous ulcer, they also have an ex coexisting arterial component. And the treatment will be different. You are not going to be, you, you modify your treatment if you know that the patient also have concomitant arterial arterial component because you know that compression excessive compression would further would further compromise the arterial flow that causes more ulceration and you might induce gangrene whereas if you have a pure venous ulcer you need to have to worry about that anyway wear your compression stocking or your bandage if you're prescribed with compression stocking or velcro like your circuit or your federal wrap you have to wear them every day as instructed by by your wound care specialist if you're someone who goes to a wound clinic and uh, your leg is uh, applied with uh, 
compression like Unaboot, Oban 2, 2 Press 2, and uh, Ferro Wrap, Circuit, whatever they are using for you, you have to make sure that you keep it on until you see your wound care specialist again because if you have a condition and, and if somebody give you a pill for that condition and you swallow it and later on you throw it out you go to the restroom and do this and vomit and throw it out the the pill is no longer in your system and do not expect that the, you will have a healing for the next few days it's the same thing with compression do not expect that your wound will improve if you don't have if you're treating the condition which is the congestion on the legs we need to put a pressure in order to help to relieve that congestion okay and it is achieved by compression therapy uh, our next tip to you is about special the use of a special dressing as recommended by your clinicians in this video i will sound like i'm yelling because i am actually gonna yell because <laughs> I, I want you to get better if you're a patient watching this. So if you are a person who goes to the wound care clinic and your clinician recommended this type of dressing, do not change that. Do not listen to your neighbor that would tell you, oh, I have the type of wound before and I use this and I use that and that healed my wound. There is a reason why special dressing is recommended for you. Dressing is not just for formality. Dressing, you have to dress for success. Meaning to say that if the wound is draining, you have to wear something that absorbs the drainage because you don't want the drainage to be uh, ground okay, or produce a breeding ground for bacterial colonization. And if your wound is dry, uh, we, uh, you have to use a dressing that donates moisture. Moisture balance is essential for the growth and migration of your cells to resurface or close your wound. If your wound is necrotic, your wound care specialist also give you some special dressing to help to naturally digest or destroy or disrupt the necrotic tissue. It's gonna be easier for them to clean up the base of your wound the next time you go and see them back in the clinic. Make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you are using the same dressing as you were instructed to use when you were at the clinic. Healthcare professional or you are a caregiver or uh, you're somebody who is taking care of someone with a venous leg ulcer and your question is what would be a good dressing to use for a venous leg ulcer? The moment you start asking that question, that is the moment your patient starts losing the battle against chronic venous leg ulcer. You know why? Dressing selection is always based on the wound characteristic, based upon constant evaluation of the wound base, the wound margins, the wound ages, the pair wound. Is there any necrotic tissue? Is there any granulation tissue? Is there any epithelial migration? Is there any maceration around the wound? Treating an ulcer is not like asking what would be a good treatment for candida infection, what will be a good treatment for this type of condition, that it's not it. That's the reason why when somebody asks me, what would be a good, uh, I have a boil here, I had some sort of uh, procedure and uh, now I have a wound and I don't know what, what would be a good treatment for it. I have to see it, I have to smell it, I have to touch it because like what I said, dressing is not for formality. Dressing has to be done for success. Another thing is that I want you to realize that having a brief walk and leg exercises will make a big difference. A lot of people use this having edema, having ulceration, not to go out and walk because they're scared that walking might exacerbate their condition. There's no evidence that walking would exacerbate your condition. If you look at the pathophysiology or how your ulceration began, began, actually, it's because one of them is because the weakness of your muscle. If While it's highly recommended that you have to go for a short and brisk walk, 
uh, frequently during the day, you have to make sure you're wearing your compression wraps or your compression stockings. no active muscle pumps well there is a little bit um i'm a there are different type of contraction but what generates a good muscle pump uh, for your venous flow is what we call the concentric con so if you're just standing and you're not ambulating you are actually um, letting gravity to pull your uh, your uh, the fluid down and uh, it's harder for your circulation to go up so you're increasing the venous pressure and if does that you are depriving the ulcer from the nutrition uh, in uh, the oxygen and whatnot that uh, it's needed for the ulcer to heal another thing is that i said avoid prolonged standing and 10 minutes is the maximum how about sitting avoid sitting for prolonged period of time like say for example you're in the plane so if you want to travel to the east coast so that's gonna be like four out four to five hours and imagine you're just sitting there for four hours or five hours okay that is very detrimental for your healing also <clears throat> if you are on a road trip to make sure that at some point you're gonna stand up you're gonna pull over for pull over and do your leg exercises and take a brief walks sometimes patient would bargain and say why do i need compression bandage or how why do i need to have this compression uh, bandage on my legs while i still have the wound is it possible for us to hold compression we're gonna heal the wound first and then after that i promise you i'll be wearing my compression stockings after uh, when the wound is healed after a thorough evaluation and there's no overwhelming indication for or a red flag for significant arterial compromise, the earlier that the compression therapy can be initiated, the better the outcome will be for the patient. In this illustration, you see a venous ulcer here and there are floating bacteria. This is just for illustration purposes. And here's the interstitial space. There's so much water on the river. There's uh, so much uh, fluid. There's so much edema. And um, you can see that the circulation is right here. Here are your um, cells, your immune cells. Uh, well, it should be white anyway trying to kill the bacteria but they cannot looks like they're having difficulty reaching the target because they are too far away now uh wouldn't you uh, are you s not surprised that some of you um has been on uh, weeks of antibiotic already for for your infected venous leg ulcer but it looks like your infection is not uh is, is not improving until you came to the clinic and we wrapped you because what happens when we wrap you is with that we actually remove this uh, let, let's see we actually drain this fluid away from the space so that we can we can bring the circulation closer to the wound now because of this as you can see that the circulation now is closer to the wound it's now easier or say for example let's see your white cells to come in and kill the infection and if this is your antibiotic particles it's now is e easier for them for the antibiotic to reach their target right here in other words healing will be enhanced this is the importance of compression therapy early in the management of venous leg ulcer i hope this makes sense to you the 215 consensus recommendations here quote compression therapy is an active therapy that is generally underused but when used on the right patient in the right way so that the concordance is maintained it is the key to healing active ulceration unquote since the duration of an ulcer has been consistently con identified as a risk factor associated with delayed healing timely implementation of appropriate compression therapy is simply then a good practice
Another common question is, my wound is healed. Why do I have to use compression wrap? It's a stocking or it's a, a Velcro like the ferro wraps, the circuit and whatnot. They will help to prevent the ulcer from coming back by controlling the swelling. Remember that the evil thing here, ladies and gentlemen, is the swelling. It's the edema because the edema can causes a lot of inflammatory response or a detrimental inflammatory process on the legs, including um, disrupting the normal circulation, uh, normal uh, flow and normal nutrition and normal metabolism within or at the surface of your skin. So it is detrimental to your skin if you have a chronic swelling. Actually, uh, you will need a new stocking every three to six months as they wear out. They wear out. Sometimes like, oh, I've been using my stocking. It's like, when was the last time you had one or fitted with one? And the patients say, oh, you know what? I was told I have to wear this every day and I had this for three years. And now I'm back with the leg ulcer. Why did this happen? I was told if I wear it every day and I will never have to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, common sense is very important. Do you, they do wear out, so they need to be replaced every three to six months. Most of the time, insurance would cover that after six months. Is an interesting case of a lady who was admitted to the hospital due to sepsis brought about by infected uh, venous leg ulcer. Uh, she stayed in the hospital for a few days and uh, after receiving uh, antibiotic infection was uh, um, well according to the record uh, infection got resolved and then uh, she was discharged to the nursing home for continued wound care there uh, she Compression therapy was initiated and uh, she stayed there for three months and then discharged home with home health. Uh, con compression therapy was continued and she was seen for another four weeks. Due to the wound is not healing and uh, they think that the wound is actually uh, getting worse. She was then discharged from home health and referred to outpatient wound care. Further assessment reveals massive erythema or redness um, on the entire leg, especially on the skin that is being wrapped, but there was no uh, tenderness, there's no warmth, or there is no induration. Uh, there's a significant drainage, and uh, it looks like uh, on her last visit prior to coming to the clinic, uh, her uh, referring physician has cultured the wound and uh, upon chart review there was no infection so let's analyze the case yes they did compression at the very onset but the dictum or uh, there is um, a saying out there that people made up uh, and they're saying that uh, some kind of compression is better than uh, no compression or they're also saying that wrong compression is always better than no compression at all really in a wrong treatment will never be right a wrong treatment will always be wrong Especially if you know that it's wrong and you still did it, then that treatment will still going to be wrong. What I'm trying to say here is that the patient has been receiving ACE wrap compression for more than four months that did not help the situation at all so my assumption is that the uh, redness is just a contact dermatitis coming from the age wrap and the blistering is because of uh, uh, improper uh, compression that has been causing tourniquet effect 
um, that actually um, enhances more stagnation at the dorsum of the foot, uh, causing older blistering and whatnot. Why are ACE rubs not recommended for compression in the treatment of venous ulcers? First, ACE wraps may not provide consistent pressure leading to uneven compression. This can result in areas of the limb receiving too much pressure, causing constriction or insufficient pressure which may not effectively address the venous insufficiency. Additionally, ACE wraps are prone to slippage potentially causing further complications. Proper compression in the treatment of venous ulcers requires graduated compression to stockings or bandages designed to exert controlled and consistent pressure, promoting better circulation and reducing edema. The compression material should be short stretch and uh, they are often preferred over long stretch bandages in the treatment of venous leg ulcers. Why? Number one is that we need to have a low resting pressure. Short stretch bandages provide low resting pressure when a patient is at rest. This helps to avoid excessive compression during period of inactivity reducing the risk of constriction and maintaining comfort. The other one is that we need to have a high working pressure. These bandages, the short stretch uh, bandages, offer high working pressure during muscle con contractions such as during walking. This dynamic compression resists and promoting venous return and helps prevent blood pooling in the lower extremities. The other thing is that uh, the material ha material has to have a reduced risk of complications. The short stress bandages are less likely to cause complications like pressure related injuries or ischemia compared to long stress bandages, which exert con constant pressure even at rest. Uh, we also have to have a good um, patient compliance. Often, patients often find short stretch bandages more comfortable, which can enhance compliance with a prescribed compression therapy. Comfortable compression increases the likelihood that patients will adhere to the recommended treatment plan. It is then crucial to consult with someone who is trained and certified in the areas of edema management uh, for the determination or for, of uh, suitability uh, with individualized compression therapy for a patient. So let's analyze this case. The redness that was observed during initial evaluation in the clinic is just a contact dermatitis coming from irritation from the age shrap. And the other thing is the blistering, the bubbles and whatnot of the dorsum of the foot is coming from a complication of um, uh, the a strap as well. When you press okay, onto the leg, there are two movements of fluids. Okay? Um, if you are not using a graduated uh, compression, there are two for, uh, directions that fluids can go to go up or to go down. In this situation, when you're using a long stretch bandage like the ACE wrap, it uh, causes a tourniquet effect. Uh, so it so it impedes the, the 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 return of or the movement of fluid going up. So where would the fluid go? They will settle or they will be pushed down on the dorsum of the foot. And uh, with this, uh, the, the fluid uh, accumulation will always uh, build pressure and this pressure will always be looking at the weak link in the skin. That's where the push up there on this, uh, that, 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 that they can form a bubble. And when the bubble erupts, uh, you will create a skin tear that will result to uh, infection and other complication. So, so first I uh, applied Uniboot on, uh, on this uh, particular patient and as soon as the uh, dermatitis got resolved, I shifted it 
to a two press two uh, compression. Uh, they're all short stretch. And then um, I also, uh, oh, by the way, I did uh, toe compression as well. Uh, I need to do something about the toes because the toes are also forming bubbles. Um, so I did a tour. Toe, toe wraps with elastomol and uh, did the serial debridement on the wound just to make sure that the wound is free from a necrotic tissue and um, hola after six weeks there was a complete resolution of the ulcer having said all this about the age wraps there are good indications for the age wrap i still use them i use them to anchor a dressing uh, to hold dressing in place i also uh, use them to uh, secure dressing on a very irregular surface uh, somewhere but it should not be compressive at all uh, what else uh, there are other indications in orthopedics with this beyond that is beyond the scope of this uh, discussion and also uh, before i leave this uh, part i have to mention if you're a clinician watching this that your compression should always conform with the law of laplace if you don't know what's the law of laplace uh, you can email me i can give you a link or i can explain or discuss it with you in conclusion, proper wound care is essential for promoting healing and preventing complications when you have a chronic venous leg ulcer. Addressing edema through appropriate measures further enhances the overall recovery process. Remember, timely attention and a comprehensive and a team approach are key to ensuring optimal outcome in wound management and edema control. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please do not forget to share, like, and subscribe because my goal is to give you free information about topics that I care about and a specialty that I love doing every single day. Have a nice day and see you in my next video.